Pope Francis named Time Magazine's 2013 Person of the Year today. They call them the People's Pope. And the magazine says Pope Francis has the potential to transform the church. But a new ABC News poll shows that an impressive 92% of Catholics view Pope Francis favorably. But I must say, with all humility and respect as a church-going Catholic, I remain concerned that the liberal, secular media is embracing the Pope for all the wrong reasons. And I remain critical of the Holy Father's attacks on capitalism and markets, which are the greatest cures for poverty of all time. So let's talk about this here now. We welcome Father Robert Sirico. He's president and co-founder of the Acton Institute and Naomi Schaefer Riley, author and former Wall Street Journal editor. Thank you for both uh, coming on. Naomi, I begin with you. Has the Pope made statements? I mean, he, I guess at one point said, don't obsess about abortion, don't obsess about traditional marriage. Has the Pope made statements that's brought the liberal media into his camp uh, for the wrong reasons? Well, I don't know about whether it's brought them in for the wrong reasons. I mean, it certainly brought them into his camp. Um, he has said we need to focus less on the social issues. Um, he has definitely uh, offered, I would say, a kind of uh, liberal economic take uh, that uh, may not be in line with your thinking. Um, but uh, but the question is, um, you know, whether he's brought along anyone besides the media, and the evidence so far suggests not really. Um, just to follow up on that, what you're saying is so far there's no evidence of more churchgoers. Is that true globally or just the United States? What do we know about that? Well, what's interesting is, uh, so a couple of weeks ago, the a Pew Forum on Religion and Public Life did um, a survey of American Catholics, and it found uh, what they called a no-Pope effect, uh, no-Pope Francis effect, which is to say uh, the number of the percentage of people who are going to Mass each week and the percentage of people who uh, identify themselves as Catholic has remained flat over the last two years. In other words, uh, there has been no change since this Pope took over. Um, in addition to that, there have been some reports coming out in Europe and some other places suggesting that maybe there is a Pope Francis effect. And one of the reasons that Pew undertook this poll is they wanted to see whether this was true in the U.S., and they, they found it not to be the case. Um, I think these other reports from other countries, um, it, it's a little bit hard to, to sort out. It's a little uh, early. It's a little early. Out. I mean, yes, in all fairness, exactly. it's a No, early. that's exactly true. I think, yeah. And I think it's a little bit early to say, because, you know, the fact of the matter is people just don't pop up one morning right. and decide, okay, I'm going back to church. I right. mean, it's a lot of people who have taken though, a long time to, to leave church. Even so why? though I haul them in now, I mean, I go and haul them in in Reading, <laughs> Connecticut. I really, well, that's very kind of you. No, no, there's a local diner. I try to bring a few with me on Sunday mornings. But <laughs> I, Father I Sarif, need you as an usher in my parish, Larry. Listen, the question I, is, do we have a Cudlow effect? I've been the head, I've been the head usher of our little church up in Reading, Connecticut for, I don't know, 10 or a dozen years, and I will tell you how much I love doing it, truly. Father sure. Sarico, it's great to see you, but you too. I want to ask you about... I mean, I read the whole exhortation, okay? I, I downloaded it, I read yeah. it. There really was quite a bit about economics in there. There really was. Eleven paragraphs. And I didn't like them one bit. I mean, he goes out of his way, the idolatry of money, the trickle-down effect, uh, and free markets don't work to help poor people. He seems to have a sense that the state and the government should exercise controls over the economy. I mean, whatever happened to godless communism and godless socialism, I understand his concerns about inequality. I share his concerns about poverty, but I think he's going about it the wrong way. No, I think you're too hard on the Pope. First of all, uh, let me talk about this Francis effect. I mean, that, that Pew study was over two years. This Pope hasn't been in office a year yet. And let me tell you, in Rome, I just got back from Rome the other day, the uh, attendance at the audiences in Rome are overwhelming. Uh, I had a guy come up to me in the airport, at Kennedy Airport, and just say, are you a Catholic priest? And I said, yeah, I am. He said, I just want you to know I like your pope. Mm. Uh, so there's that. Uh, the, the other thing is uh, there are 11 paragraphs on uh, economics, not all of them negative, because he praises the noble vocation of business, of entrepreneurship. The trickle-down translation isn't exactly what he said in the Spanish and in the Italian. So there may be a translation problem there. I don't want to put too much weight on that. But uh, the fact of the matter is, don't you oppose idolatry of money? Don't you well, oppose look, I know, the, but, the kind of crony capitalism that yes, we see but, in Argentina but, and elsewhere? See, that's the thing. Um, I'm afraid 
that the Pope is using the Argentine experience to generalize, and I think that's a real that bad may be. mistake. That may I, be because I that's know who a fair he is. amount about Argentina. Yeah. I spent a lot of time there. The one market-oriented government they had in the last couple of decades, the right. Menem government, right. uh, I was there as an advisor right. and pleased right. to do so. But I think this idea, the statement the Pope made that the state should be in charge is something that I find uh, extremely uh, 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 troublesome. I have to see that text because he decries the welfare He said mentality. he wants the state and the government to exercise controls in order to reduce inequality. Right. I mean, Argentina is a perfect example of why the state you, and the government, which uh, really runs the country and uh, doles out favors to the private sector, does not work. Unfortunately, uh, the Argentines are as impoverished today as they were 50 or 100 years ago. You know you're not going to have an argument with me about free markets and, and the importance of a, a vibrant free economy that's, uh, you know, really free. The point I'm trying to make is that he's teaching in a non-ideological way. What the Pope is saying is that he situates himself in the whole of the Church's uh, tradition on these kinds of issues, which would include the principle of subsidiarity that says that needs are best met at the most local level. So let's, let's hear him out. And in, in terms of um, generalizing from his experience, of course he's going to do that. He's also seen wretched poverty up very close. All I'll say is, if you do see him, you just tell him, Cudlo, I'm there every Sunday. I uh, never uh, miss a Sunday. I will make sure and he you has your cell number, cell I'm, number, Larry. I'm there, and for his holiness, please, please, dear Lord, please, go more towards the markets and capitalism. That's the best cure of poverty. I agree and, that and the joy listen. of the gospel must cure poverty. I agree with that. The question no, is how. The, Let the me cure, get out of here. I got to go. Okay. Father Robert Stricker, thank you ever so much. Naomi Schaefer-Riley, as always, thanks for coming on.